Hello. Today, we're going to look at how using action triggers in combination with condition objects in EasyBuilder Pro can help to simplify a project and reduce the number of macros needed. Action triggers and condition objects are useful features exclusive to the CMT and CMTX series that users can quickly set up and implement flexibly throughout their project. An action trigger object is capable of carrying out a number of different actions, some of which cannot be performed directly by a macro. It supports up to five different modes, idle timeout, value changed, control token, use secure access, and condition object. In idle timeout mode, the action trigger object only fires after a specified time of idleness. In value change mode, the action trigger fires whenever the value in a specified register changes. In control token mode, the action trigger fires whenever the specified control token is acquired. In Enhanced Security Mode, the action trigger fires whenever a user logs in or out of a specified security class. Condition Object Mode will fire the action trigger depending on the status of a specified condition object. For this video, we will focus on implementing the action trigger's condition object mode. In this example, we have a project where we need to move data from one set of registers to another whenever the value in a separate register is greater than or equal to 5 but we only want to do so if two specific bits are turned on. If the condition is no longer being met, either because the value becomes less than 5 or one of the bits is turned off, we will move the data back to the original registers. All the while, we want to fill all the registers that the data moves from with the value of 0. The first step to implementing such a project is to set up the condition object. In EasyBuilder Pro, go to the Object tab and select the Condition button. Clicking on New will bring up the menu for creating a new condition object. There can be multiple conditions in one condition object connected either by the AND or the OR operator. If AND is selected, all of the conditions must be met in order for the condition object to be true. If OR is selected, only one of the conditions will need to be met. For our project, we have three total conditions to consider. We will put one condition for when LW0 is greater than or equal to 5, and the other two conditions will check if LB2 is on and if LB3 is on. If we had more than one condition object to find, we could create conditions that depend on another condition object, shown in the Type drop-down list. If you wanted to, you could also configure it to trigger an output bit when the condition is met, though for our purposes, we will only need the condition. The second step after having configured the condition object is to create the action trigger objects. Selecting the Action Related button will give us three options, Per Page, Global, and Touch Gesture. Per Page will only apply to the window that the action trigger is implemented in, Global will apply throughout the whole project, and Touch Gesture Will only apply when specified touch gestures are performed. We will select the global option for our project. Selecting new in the window that pops up will allow us to create a new action trigger object. Opening the mode drop down list we will select condition object. Opening the newly appeared condition object drop down list will allow us to select the condition object we wish to use. However, since we only have one, we can leave it as is. Looking at the Trigger drop-down list, we have four options. Off will trigger the action when the condition is false. On will trigger the action when the condition is true. Off to on will trigger when the condition changes from false to true. On to off will trigger when the condition changes from true to false. For our project, we will choose Off to On for our first action trigger. Now we can select the actions that we want the action trigger object to perform. The actions in an action trigger object are separated by groups, where each group executes its actions concurrently, and it isn't until a group has finished executing all of its actions that the actions in the next group will start being executed. Clicking on the plus button will open a drop-down list of the actions we can select while in condition mode. We will select data transfer and say that we want to move the data in 10 registers starting at LW10 into another set of 10 registers starting at LW30. 
By specifying the number of words, we are essentially telling it how many consecutive registers to move data from and to, since one word is 16 bits and each LW register is also 16 bits. Since we also wanted to replace the data that is moved with a value of zero, in the second action group, we can do another data transfer. This time, we will move the data from 10 empty registers, in this case, starting from LW40, into the 10 registers starting at LW10. Now we will make another action trigger object that will work in the reverse, for when we move the data back from the LW30 registers to the LW10 registers. This time, we will select on to off as our trigger. In the first action group, we will define the data transfer for 10 words starting at LW30 into LW10. Then, just like the first action trigger object we made, we will set the values in the LW30 registers to zero by doing another data transfer in the next action group starting at LW40 into the LW30 registers. Now, I will configure the project window to help show the action trigger and condition object in action. On the left hand side, you can see the 10 registers starting at LW10 where the data will be initially stored, and on the right hand side, the LW30 registers where the data will be moved. We also have two toggle switches for LB2 and LB3. In the middle, we have a numeric object showing the value of LW0 and two arrow keys for incrementing and decrementing the value. We will start the simulation and see how everything functions. If the value in the LW0 register goes to 5, but one or both bits are not on, the condition is not met and so the action trigger is not fired. After turning the bits on, however, the data moves from the LW10 registers to the LW30 registers. Then, when the condition is less than 5, or when one of the bits is no longer on, the second action trigger object is fired, moving the data back, and just like we configured it, the values in the previous set of registers are always set to 0 after the transfer. For comparison's sake, here's what it would look like if we wanted to accomplish the same exact functions solely through a macro. As you can see, we would have to manually move the data and also set those registers to zero after, all while trying to account for the status of other conditions. And while both setups function the exact same, considering the time and energy it takes to plan and write a macro such as this, it would likely be easier and faster to just use an action trigger with a condition object. This was just one example of how you can simplify a project. There are many other potential use cases for action triggers and condition objects that can help add fluidity and flexibility to your program and help reduce the number of macros needed. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our channel where we have more hardware and software tutorials. You can also visit our website at wintechusa.com to get the latest software downloads, view our official documentation, and more. Thanks for watching.